Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Good morning. Um, Manuel Perez is the uh, principal investigator on in our project, and I'm helping out a bit. We have um, a number of interesting things we're uh, starting to look at. Uh, the camera arrived up to me on Friday, so I um, can't give you a lot of evidence except uh, observations from a few days of things. Um, so we have two different applications, one in the veterinary college, so, uh, or in other words, uh, with, with animals, other people working with plants, uh, and other, uh, other kinds of things. And so what's a bit unusual in this is that uh, we're interested in collaboration among several students with sense camps. So how can they work together in different ways? So that's uh, one of the unusual things. So usually we think of this as a personal device. So the goals for students, so this is in the realm of educational support, how do, uh, how do people uh, in involved in clinical activities, uh, learning to be uh, veterinarians. Uh, how do they improve their recall during their studies, but also afterwards, because these people will be in practice, and they'll be working with animals, and they like to have a history of cases. If you think of physicians and others, they think back, oh, I had this case, and I had this situation. Um, and also, how can they share information among, among each other? So this can result from the sense scan itself, but um, in the case of uh, surgery theater, um, you need better resolution of that as well. So having a, an additional camera where you're recording the operation from overhead, for example, uh, plus live notes from people and so on could be very useful. So the, the, the question of sharing means um, will people share things with others? Uh, the, how do you do that? You upload it to some server and then everyone has access to the server and you have access control and all those kinds of issues. So those are one of the things. So the second application is for students with disabilities, and there's been a fair amount of discussion about this kind of situation. So in our case, we visited the assistive technologies office on our campus, which is the place where most people who um, are looking for assistance will go and, and uh, get, us, get various kinds of advice and um, affordances. So one of the questions is, can we go beyond what SenseCan does in terms of GPS and we can do in-building notation so we can tell where someone is? Um, but the problem that, that they posed to us that was most important for them was that the caregiver for someone with a disability uh, and the people in the assistive technology office have trouble figuring out what to do and what the person's facing and what their difficulties are. And it's difficult to get them to report on those kind of situations. So if, uh, if a person can have a week with the sense cam, and then the uh, people who are helping them with affordances can then study that, then that should be of, of benefit. So, so those are, these are the two different applications. Um, here's a timeline of, of our planned studies, which we were going to start early in the spring, but so we'll, we'll redo our, our time frame. Um, but but notion of, of various uh, different people, pairs of students working in the veterinary college, um, we have privacy issues, legal issues, and so forth in terms of getting cooperation with people with, with disabilities to get them to sign up. And we've, um, we've looked at the, the issues not only of, um, of people with uh, a physical disability, but uh, attention deficit is a serious problem for people to remember things. They, they miss out on observing things. And they're not tuned in. So who, who would be best helped by this? We don't know. And uh, we don't have any good evidence on that. So if anyone else has good evidence on who are the, the most helpful uh, communities of students, that would be uh, quite valuable. And of course, we want to do study and repeat the study and, and uh, make enhancements and so on. Um, in the spring, there was a course on personal information management that Manuel ran, and uh, one of the student projects uh, that came out of this, I thought, was interesting to present. So, so we're needing to pose this to students as a, as a way that they can begin this. So here's a, here's a student presentation. Um, and I'm, I took out a few slides, but, but most of it's here. So uh, they do the usual. Let's look at um, literature. Uh, let's construct a bibliography. Look at scenarios. Uh, interview ex experts. Uh, analyze the task. Build the prototype. Uh, walk through and, with people and, and so on. So here's, uh, here's what they came up with. So the, uh, there's an analysis phase, a design phase, a prototype and evaluation phase. So 
So if we look at this cognitive walkthrough process, um, what can you do with the memex in a prototype way? What are the scenarios? Uh, how do we walk through this? What kind of usability issues result, result from a first attempt? And how can we fix those? Uh, and we can go back, and, and we had a certainly much better introduction at the beginning of today uh, about memory and all these things. But this is this, the student things just in, in simple ways. We have um, different kinds of memory. Um, we have encoding and storage. And, and there are different types of long-term memory, the, the semantic, the episodic, the procedural. Procedural is, is particularly interesting, we think, to the veterinary students, students because they're doing procedures. And, and the biofeedback process also has to do a, a bit with the procedural kinds of things. Um, those are hard to capture in, in many other ways. And, um, and then there's the uh, aspects, the declarative versus the, the non-declarative. So um, sometimes people will have experiences. Sometimes they'll be pre-programmed for something. Sometimes because of that pre-programming, the, they won't observe things that are actually happening. Uh, we have accommodation, simulation, changes in behavior and so forth are, are important. Um, and so the issue of of uh, what happens consciously and what happens unconsciously, uh, how that relates to culture and how these things change over time is quite interesting. So there, there's some kinds of interference that uh, get in the way of recall that are uh, from prior learning experiences, um, and, and others have to do with um, uh, sort of post hoc learning situations. So we can get into cues and how they affect and how people are primed for situations. They're, they're um, I'll just have a very brief funny story. I was uh, in Portland Airport, um, hungry for breakfast at 5 in the morning, and I went up to this menu, and, and I was thinking, gee, I'd love to have some spinach, and it's unusual to get this. For so, I, so I saw this menu, and I looked at it and said, oh, spinach omelet, amazing. So, so I ordered this, and uh, when I ate the Spanish omelet, uh, which is what I was actually served, <laughs> I realized that I had determined that was what it was going to say, even though it didn't. So uh, we, we do this all the time, and students do this all the time, and faculty do this all the time, so it's kind of interesting. But, uh, but so we have the, these, these issues of um, episodic behavior, um, uh, language, uh, semantics, uh, how all these things fit together, and there's a fair amount of literature on all that. Um, so one of the situations that people face, for example, with vision difficulties is uh, macular degeneration. This tends to be more for, for people who are more elderly, but uh, does happen in teaching. And, and so here's examples of what it might look like for someone uh, resulting in difficulty with, with faces and um, perhaps preferring a dim background to others. So another example of, of impairments um, from problems with the hippocampus uh, can lead to short-term memory, forgetfulness, uh, deterioration over time, and trouble with associative memory. So, so there are very specific problems that, that people face in different situations. And the assistive technology lab really wants to understand uh, and personalize the, uh, the affordances to others. Um, so in order to design in this kind of situation, uh, we can follow fairly traditional approaches uh, and validate this through uh, not only literature, but interviews with experts and, and cognitive walkthroughs. So in order to make proper designs, here's a kind of approach. Uh, look at the graphics, figure out the, the navigation, um, leverage what the user is going to pick up from recognition as opposed to recall. Uh, so context is very important in these situations. Um, provide um, visibility for the, the mode and the status of the situation. Deal with internationalization, um, provide uh, help without losing state because people can tend to get confused when you switch on these kinds of things and also provide some tutorials. So, so this is an interesting background because um, when I went to the tablet session on, on Monday, it struck me that the SenseCam would be a nice feed to people who are building tablet applications. You, know, you, you um, study people's behavior over time and then you use this kind of approach that I'm saying here with particular design guidelines to then produce a tablet application tailored for that particular person's situation. Um, so you can try and classify people. Do they have mild cognitive impairment? In which case, you might simplify the task steps, uh, help them with uh, time and objects in a graphical presentation, um, and provide reminders in those regards. If there's visual impairment, then you can have larger fonts. You can have more contrast between fore foreground and background, um, and have different kinds of uh, media types. So here's the, the prototype that came out of uh, playing with all these things that. Uh, that the students felt would be helpful. So here we can have uh, creating personalized views. Uh, 
people, places, time, date, documents, pictures, um, and for some people, medications. Uh, so then the places side here, uh, visual representations of maps and of images of popular places, tying in with those images the, the details about these uh, ability to make changes and set different views. For people, of course, people's images and their names, for documents to have thumbnails and lists and text and speech kinds of things, so this back, back to the speech discussion here before, lists of documents as well. Um, for, for particular text, we can have the characteristics of those so they can vary to be suitable for a person uh, for their visual situation, for example. Um, then get into finding things. It's, it's important to have simple ways to find things. Um, there are lots of easy answers that people would like to have answers to. So often finding something is finding something that you sort of have it on a list of, of common things or to have a wizard that can assist you. So for finding easy things, um, I always have trouble with uh, who did I see. Actually, I wish I could remember that person's name because uh, they're not wearing a name tag and, and uh, I know I saw them, but you know, uh, or what was that event I saw, students observing things in a, in a veterinary situation, this is particularly appropriate. Uh, or where was I when this happened, or when I, when I met this person, or, or I heard this thing, or, uh, or whatever. Um, and, and the find wiz wizard can cl click back to the, the people, places, times, and documents that we referred to before. Those are uh, sort of built into the SenseCam stuff now, a little bit of, of some of this. So that, that's kind of in keeping. Uh, here we get, uh, again, somewhat similar to the SenseCam interface. You can see time, place, and document. It's a little bit different, though, and, and so you can see different sets of, if you pick um, people, for example, you can get uh, those options there. And those provide other context for it. Here we have a particular person, and now you can see things spilling off from that person, the, the emails that connected them to me, the documents that we share, the places that we had in common, the times that we met, and so forth. So this is providing context for that particular person that you've chosen. Uh, and here's a, another more detailed example where we have the uh, particular dates, uh, and perhaps at a particular date, all those those things were in play at that particular point in time. Or we can even go back to the conversation that day. Uh, here's the particular person in a setting for yoga activity, uh, which of course can then tie you into websites and other events of that kind, and other kinds of information about that. Or another takeoff from the, the semantic network kind of browsing that we're doing here. Uh, ties you from that yoga to uh, a particular workshop and again the people and the places and the times that were that or similar events. So sort of in general from the student report this notion of integration with other applications and devices of having this date and time as a, as a key thing on this, these screens, the mouse over to help you with the magnification, different kinds of help assistances, um, some of this prototyping and uh, perhaps ability to scroll forward to future events to, to make plans as well as review the, the past activities. So that's the student report, uh, just to show you the creativity of a, of a group of students playing with this kind of thing and, and types of things they can come up with. And those of you who are interested in uh, assistance with interfaces, we'd love to have collaboration on that regard because we have a big HCI group in that area. Um, so coming back to, to um, my earlier observation about the tablet from on Monday, um, it seemed to me that um, if in all the wealth of things you saw in the demo fest and other kinds of applications in, in, in this uh, presentation set today, uh, if we had componentized versions of all these things and we could build new applications by piecing them together um, and we had a, a generator of those applications that a designer could, could um, work with that uh, was based on an analysis of someone wearing a sense cam for a while um, that we could produce very creative kinds of interfaces that would be well tailored for a particular person's needs. So this sort of moves us towards this notion of a, of a synergy between the capture, the analysis, the design, and the deployment of these kinds of methods. So in summary, uh, two efforts, sort of sketched a bit about those, gave a, a notion about the, the students, uh, talked a bit about this idea with tablets. Uh, we are looking forward to the new version with the audio. Uh, and Reflecting over this week, uh, I'm hoping that there will be more integration between the SenseCam activities and the other things around Microsoft Research, the, the search technology group and all the innovations there, all the interesting innovation uh, I've seen in the image processing and summarization in, in the different areas, the tablet activities. So I think uh, more integration could be quite exciting. Uh, and perhaps as a motivation for that, uh, 
uh, I'm involved in the uh, Digital Library Conference world. Uh, next year, the Digital Library Conference for the Americas will be in Vancouver, not too far from here. And uh, it would be quite exciting to have a workshop one or maybe even two-day workshop on personal digital libraries uh, in which this group could play a key role. And it would be quite exciting to, uh, to the community and I think it would be a, perhaps a, a way for the presentations we see today to expand to a two-day event. Um, so I'd be happy to help in that regard if that's a, of interest. Thank you. Questions? Hi. Are you going? Are you planning to work with the uh, MLB software for for either of your groups, or um, have you gotten that far? What you're going to be doing? Where are you going to put your sense scan images? Same. That NLP project. The, the ML the my life fit software. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've been um, okay. So so what I have been doing. Um, as, a, as an academic, I like to play with things before the students have to fuss with these, so I've been uh, helping Jim with lots of bug reports um, in terms of using the software on my own machine and indexing my mail and using the other parts of it. So now I'm hoping to tie in the images as well.